Hi, I'm Josh, and welcome to another edition of the Butler Sports Report. I've got the other Josh here, and today we're going to talk about a rough week for Butler men's basketball. Butler went 0-2 this week, both games inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. They lost to Georgetown and Creighton. It was not a good week for the Butler Bulls. No, not at all. Uh, Butler played Georgetown on Saturday night uh, inside Hinkle, Hinkle Fieldhouse. The final score of that game was 85-81. to Butler's defense not stellar in the Georgetown game. No, anytime you give up 85 points, it's not good. It's the first time in Chris Holman's career as a coach that they scored 80 points and still managed to lose. Georgetown had three players with 20-plus points, LJ Peak, Rodney Pryor, and Jesse Govan. It's, it starts with defense, and it was just not there. It's very hard to win a basketball game when you have three different players on the other team scoring more than 20 points and all shooting over 50% from the field. It's difficult even no matter how well you shot the ball and Butler shot the ball fine they shot 55 percent from the field mm -hmm. and had and Keel Martin led scores on it for Butler with 22 and Andrew Travis closely behind with 16 so they didn't shoot the ball poorly but their defense just you offense just can't keep up with the defense when they're shooting when Georgetown shot as well as they did yeah and Georgetown shot 73 percent in the second half and 60 percent from the three-point line in the second half yeah. that just can't happen no it can't it's very hard to win uh, Georgetown came out and shot and played well in the first half and then shot even better in the second half. But Butler just wasn't on top of their game defensively and it resulted in a loss in a game that their offense played well enough to win the game, but their defense let them down. Yeah, I guess the one promising thing is that Keelan Martin did have 22 points, so it was exciting to see him get back on track a little yep. bit, but at the end of the day, it's just not good enough. Yeah, um, Butler then lost to Creighton uh, on Tuesday night. Very similar game uh, in terms of defense for Butler. Um, Creighton also put up more than 80 points, had three players in, with 15 points, and those three players scored more points than any Butler Bulldog. Uh, Kamar Ballin led Butler scores with 14 points, but once again, defense was a problem against Creighton. Yeah, and also uh, adding to the defense, in this game, the Bulldogs had more turnovers than they did assists. They only had nine assists, and when your defense is not where it needs to be, and the offense is stagnant and the ball's not really moving and people aren't making plays for each other, it, it leads to losses and just not good basketball. And ugly losses. At yeah. that crate, the Creighton loss was not a pretty one by any stretch of the imagination. On a similar note with the offense being inefficient, Butler only shot seven free throws in the entire game. Um, in their win against Marquette a couple weeks ago, Butler shot 32 free throws in the second half. Um, Winning that game and scoring 88 points in that game, it's it, it's obvious that the offense was not, they were not being aggressive. They were settling for lots of jumpers, and that shows with only seven free throws. Um, yeah, it was just not a pretty game for the Bulldogs. They only had two players in double figures, and all around, just not a very great game. Credit does need to go to Creighton, though. They shot 62% from the three-point line. Obviously, that was partially due to Butler's less than ideal defense, but also they just made their shots. Yeah. They do deserve credit for that. It, it was a tough game, but it was just a lethal combination of Creighton playing really well and Butler not matching them. Yeah. Uh, even if you do play poor defense, they still shot incredibly from the field, and they do deserve some credit for yeah. that. They definitely played a great a great game um, and came out with a win, deservingly. Mm -hmm. um, in the next week, Butler travels to Marquette, to play Marquette for the second time in the Big East Conference schedule. The first time, as we mentioned, Butler uh, came back from a 15, 16 point deficit at halftime, ended up winning, uh, scoring over 60 points in the second half. Um, they're gonna need to slow down Marcus, How Marcus Howard uh, this time around. Marcus Howard had 26 points against Butler inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. Um, if they want, it's very unlikely that the Bulldogs will once again score that many points in the second half, so they'll need to find a different way to uh, slow down Marquette and right. the game. And Marquette is a very, very balanced team. They had five players in double figures the first time these mm -hmm. two teams met. It comes from different places every night, which makes them dangerous and similar to Butler in that sense. And, you know, perimeter defense is still important. It's not where it needs to be yet. And Marquette certainly has the guards to make Butler pay for that if it doesn't improve. Yeah, and Butler also had five players in, uh, mm -hmm. scoring in double figures in that game, so they will also need to a step up the offensive play, especially coming off the Creighton game where the offense, the offensive end of the ball was uh, was poor. They, Butler also took really good care of the basketball against Marquette, having only four turnovers in the game. Uh, Butler averages around 10 turnovers a game, but when you turn the ball over only four times, it makes it a whole lot easier to have 
um, an efficient offense, uh, an efficient offense, and you know, not giving up easy layups on fast breaks because of turnovers goes a long way in the grand scheme of things. Absolutely, one of the keys and kind of DNA of Butler is not beating themselves, and it's kind of defensively they are starting to beat themselves, but taking care of the ball and making your opponent actually beat you is something they need to get back to. Yeah. In other sports, the men's and women's track and field team and the men's and women's tennis teams are all in action. They're all in action over in, uh, across the Midwest. Uh, and the women's basketball team is also in action here on Butler's campus inside Hinkle Fieldhouse when they take on Xavier at 1 o'clock. It's always a big game when Xavier comes yep. to town in basketball, men's yep. or women's, yep. so it should be fun. Yep, it should be. Make sure you're going to support all of the student athletes that have events on campus. really helps them out. Um, it's really just encouraging to see lots of classmates and friends at their games um, and really taking advantage of home court, uh, home field, um, whatever the case may be. It's definitely a, uh, an advantage to be on a home court and having lots of students out uh, is definitely an advantage. That's all we have for you guys today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this edition of the Butler Sports Report um, and we hope to see you next week. Good dogs.